But recently I made a video called We May Be Winning, and it was referring to the battle that has been fixing my Ender 3 v3 SE. I had this title for the video in mind since the beginning because I thought that I would finally make real progress now that Creality had exhausted all other options for me and was now willing to send me parts. Unfortunately, this printer continues to fight me. I wanted to make this video as either a companion or alternative to the other video since the other video was so long. I wanted to condense the journey down for the average viewer who either has no attention span or just doesn't want to spend the time. So, let's talk about what happened. After the beginning explanation, the video starts with me announcing that something positive has happened and Creality has confirmed that they're going to send some replacement parts for the printer. This happened because I noticed a potential fatal flaw that could be the whole reason that my level data is so off. I have a decent eye for eyeballing and noticing when things aren't right when working and tinkering with things. So I noticed that the nozzle and the level probe didn't seem to be level with each other. I think I noticed it first with the 3D print head cover on just by looking at the nozzle and probe tips poking just barely through. And it turned out that the issue went deeper when the whole head seemed to be tilted along with the leveling probe and nozzle already not being level with each other in the first place. This was confirmed by setting an actual level on top of the uncovered print head. The uncovered adjective is important because even though the vital organs were tilted, the cover was level for some reason. Creality's first response was of course to say level the x-axis, but if you've been following this journey, you know that that wasn't the issue, even from the beginning. I almost wish it was the issue so that I could just have the machine be able to do what it needs to do. So I start out mildly excited by the fact that I'm getting new parts, but it's hard to get really excited when you've been working on this printer for so long and it seems so fruitless. So the first package of parts arrives. I believe it took about two weeks for this first one to get to me. What came was a replacement CR touch module and a new mount bracket to go with it. I say in the beginning that it was less than expected based on the email. I also state that I don't know if it came down to miscommunication on my or their part. Turns out that it was a fault somewhere on Creality's side because there was supposed to be one other major part included, but we'll talk about that later. It's also here where I start to talk about the Creality customer support. I make a few good points in this section about their attentiveness and possible issue with the language barrier. But the main point that I make throughout the first section is that I don't think that these parts are going to solve my problem based on the fact that I put the level on the top part of the direct drive extrusion motor. It's a thing that's what it's called. I also talked about this while talking about the customer support because I mentioned that I give the support options of what could be happening and I don't think that they're used to that. So I think there was some possible misinterpreting of my messages. But at the same time, there was that warehousing issue where they didn't send the complete package that they were supposed to in the first place. They moved to the first tinkering and replacement. Because I wasn't fully confident in the bracket being the final puzzle piece to solve all my issues, I decided to try and further troubleshoot and try to figure out exactly why my whole head is tilted. So I take some time to fiddle with the head and observe. I wanted to start by taking the head off the x-axis. What I didn't know was that this is a much bigger task than I realized. So I spent around 5-10 to 10 minutes trying to loosen the locking nuts on the back, not realizing that I was doing it completely wrong. And I end up doing it wrong twice, going for different components each time, but neither of them were the right ones. We will again talk more about that later. I also talk about my little 3D printing toolbox, which has actually come in handy for keeping a bunch of 3D printing specific parts together and organized. I will have an affiliate link for this in the description if it's available, or alternatives if it's not. What I end up finding is that one of the V wheels seems to be pulled down for some reason. I can even pull the head back to bring it in proper orientation, but it comes back down due to the belt tension that's required to function properly. This is where I first mentioned the possibility of needing to replace the V-wheels altogether. I don't mention this explicitly in the original video, but I didn't ask Creality for these in the beginning because I thought that they would say that they wouldn't be willing to replace the V-wheels due to them technically being considered a consumable item. Eventually I did ask and they would provide them, which makes sense since there should be no reason with the relatively short time that I had run the machine that they should have worn down. They had to have come from the factory defected. But that happened later in the story, so we'll come back to it. 
While examining the head's tilt, I talk about how annoying the head cover is while trying to do maintenance for repairs on the print head itself. The cover hangs awkwardly off the head when removed, and there's pretty much no way to have it sit well off to the side while still connected to the daughter board attached to the print head. And it's connected behind some key components. Removal of the wire is relatively easy, other than the kind of crazy wraparound angle you need to give the wire so that it can get routed to where it needs to go. But if you want to remove the wire for simple maintenance and need to reconnect it without disassembling the whole head, it is quite the nuisance of a task. There's a small area behind what I think is the heater block. I don't know the right name for it. But you need to try and thread that connector and wire back through the little cavity. Sometimes it can be more forgiving than others. But in my case, the actual connector head would often bend in a wrong direction and block itself from going through the passage cleanly. This is mainly because of that wraparound angle and the cord's shaping memory from it. While working with the print head cover, while working with the print head cover, this is also where I noticed that the part's cooling fan shroud seems to be 3D printed. I state in the video that it's not crazy that it can be 3D printed, it just seems like a weird choice to have it 3D printed as an actual production piece. So now we start to try and unplug the fan connection. However, they put hot glue blobs on the top of all of these little connectors most likely to try and keep them from falling out initially, either in shipping or during the first uses until something wears out. And when I say that, I don't mean that something is going to wear out within like 10 uses or anything like that. I just mean that they're there until you have to remove them. I expressed frustration with this in the video and explained my reasoning wrong in the moment. I say that I don't understand why they do this and that it doesn't make sense because after, no one's going to hot glue them again. While the statement partially makes sense, I of course do understand why they do it. Anyway, I find it frustrating to remove because it wasn't going to be particularly easy by hand. They make good round blobs, which is good for presentation, however is not good for gripping when removing. I think I saw this in a separate tutorial video, but Creality removed their globs with the side cutters. This is kind of a problem for a couple reasons. First of all, you have to pinch the glue just right without cutting it. Obviously, if you cut it, your grip comes loose and you have to start over with less area to work with while it's still stuck together. The other main issue is the area that you're working in. I think it says specifically in the Creality tutorial that I watched, be careful not to cut any wires. And I'm sitting there looking like, it's just easier said than done. Honestly though, it's not that hard not to cut a wire, but it's just a little nerve wracking that it's an option there that can happen. To top it off, looking back on the situation, I may have just been able to use needle nose pliers and make the situation a little easier. But I'm also not for sure if that's actually going to be any easier or more effective. If you try removing the glue with needle nose pliers, let me know how it went in the comments. Next, I attempt to remove the bottom V-wheel incorrectly again. After a few minutes of incorrectly trying, I move on to removing the direct drive motor. I fiddle with it not knowing slash remembering that there is a PTFE tube in between the two major parts of the extruder. Eventually, I look up a disassembly video and figure it out. I also struggled with it because I forgot that I had some plastic still in the extruder after it snapped itself off. Run through the... All right. I also noticed a bare surface mount solder pad on the PCB behind the motor. It says C1 by it, indicating that a capacitor is supposed to be there, but there is no component on the board or pads. So at this point, I don't know if I knocked it off, or if it was just never there to begin with. As far as I can tell, at least with the V3SE, it's not supposed to be there by default, but I'm still not 100% sure. I never actually changed the leveling probe bracket in this session and went to support to try and figure out the physical wobble on the head. So we cut to the next session where we now have a chassis plate delivered. This was the other important part that was supposed to be in the original shipment along with the other parts. This one took around a month to be delivered. On top of that, the printer has just been frustrating and I've had a month to just stew on that. So I wasn't exactly eager to get back to work once the part had actually arrived. Another thing that customer support recommended in this last transaction for acquiring the missing piece was that they said the wobble could possibly be fixed by tightening the tension belt. 
I didn't remember exactly what belt they were talking about, but I assumed it was the belt on the X-axis V-extrusion. I think that's the right info in ter terms and names. So the first thing I do is tighten some pieces behind the belt tensioners because I also watched another Creality support video showing a bunch of things that could come loose and how to tighten them. So I tighten these parts up. Sorry that I don't remember the exact names of these parts. I don't know for sure if I ever actually knew in the first place. Then I move to the actual belt tensioner. I put it at max tightness and it only minorly helps. So I do loosen it up again a bit because it would likely be over tightened now. So my next step was that I wanted to remove the print head gantry slash chassis to just examine and try to see something flawed. Once again, I tried to remove the V-wheels incorrectly. I believe it was the same way as last time, this time. I continue to disassemble the whole thing by taking the heater block off. However, I did leave the wires connected. The block and the other pieces are not heavy enough to put strain on the wires. They just kind of freely float there. It's hard to see in the video and hard for me to remember, but I think I just loosened the bottom V-wheel, and after some deconstruction, I was able to start to pull the head off at an angle. Though, I think I wasn't fully able to remove it for one reason or another, so I continued to remove the PCB board from the chassis. I also needed to remove everything to replace the chassis anyway, so that may have been part of it. I remove the belts from the old chassis and start to compare the old one to the new one. There are only minor differences in the machining between the two models. The only thing that's different and improved on the new chassis is some little tabs that hold the belts in place. The original one just has some rectangular nubs that put tension on the belts, kinda, and the new one has some small walls to keep the belts in the slots properly. Finding effectively no difference in the models, at least ones that will help our situation, I start to reassemble the head onto the new chassis. I try to make notes and observations along the way, but most seem to be either irrelevant or simply unhelpful. It's also here where I really take a close look and think that the tips of the probe and nozzle are not perpendicular. It was only an assumption observation before. This was closer to a confirmation. It's also during this reassembly that I express my anger with the difficulty of trying to reroute that wire for the fan attached to the cover. Once I get close to the point of exchanging the probe brackets, I try to compare the two and see if one is straighter than the other. This was, of course, by eyeballing it. I did try to lose my level on one, but the level was just too big for measuring up this part effectively. I also lose track of which one is the new bracket and assume that the dirtier one is the old bracket. I attach the clean one and find that the bracket is still not straight. So I start to make statements like it seems that everyone's bracket may not be level unless I happen to get two lemons in a row. I assembled the rest of the head except for the cover to see if the whole thing had gotten more level from the new chassis being installed. It did not. I also tried installing the other bracket for the sake of just trying it. Just in case I was mistaken which one was the new bracket. Turns out the dirtier one was the new one. And I mentioned in the video that it looks almost used or something like that. Also keep in mind that even though they sent another CR Touch module, I never used it because I didn't think that that was the issue. As far as I know, I'm right, especially with the events coming up. With the other bracket installed, I now look at and eyeball the straightness. Oh, it actually looks way straighter. It actually seems straighter. It looks almost completely flat with the nozzle now, other than the whole head still being tilted. So now we move to another session with another long gap in between. The package actually arrived shortly after the message and shipment was confirmed. I think it was only a couple days, but it was at least for sure within the week. But I was so sick of working on the printer, it still was a couple weeks before I got back to work on it. I don't know if the shipping time had something to do with me just being lucky, or if they paid for better shipping on this shipment. I make some announcements like the fact that I fully put the head back together, and the nozzle and probe look straight with each other, but the actual new and major update stated here was that I was finally able to update my printer firmware from version 1.0.4 to 1.0.6. I had been trying to do this for a long time and could never get it to work without it looking really messed up on the install. Turns out the issue was simply that I needed to rename one of the files to literally anything else but its default. The next major update that I inform you of is that I received replacement V-wheels from Creality. Just as a little injection here because I didn't have a good spot in the script to put it in. 
I have all the requirements for monetization except for subscriber count, so please consider doing that. So I get to work on disassembling the head again. I remembered to try and remove the plastic this time, however I quickly run into an issue. On the surface it seems like a much bigger issue than it actually was. The printer was reading negative 14 celsius for the nozzle temperature permanently. When I tried heating the nozzle, it would stay at this reading and activate thermal runaway. At least I think that's what happens. Basically, it errors, says that the temperature is not being detected properly, and starts to beep at you obnoxiously and kind of scarily if you don't know what's happening. The worst part is that there's no way to turn this off except for flicking the power switch on the printer. I don't know if there's a logical reason for this, but seriously, Creality, add an OK or abort button. I would assume that the printer is already aborting the heat function, so what's the point of locking up the screen from doing literally anything? Thinking about it now, it's possible that the lock screen would go away once the temperature cools, but also it has no way of knowing what the actual temperature is, so I don't know. This was just kind of an annoying experience. I thought that my temperature sensor had died for essentially no reason, which would probably be the normal problem in this case. However, it was just a slip of the mind in this case, and I had unplugged the data cable from the head and forgot that I had already done so when I remembered to take out the plastic. So all I had to do was plug in the cable, remove the plastic, and get back to work. Next I attempt to show the minimum of how far you need to take the head apart to get to the V-wheels and take them off. I didn't remember from the last time and got the wrong stage on camera first. Then I cut to the proper stage which is fully disassembled and show how you're supposed to remove the V-wheels and unscrew them with the locking nut installed. After that I cut to the new V-wheels already installed and the head mostly assembled and attached to the X-axis. Put the level on the motor and... The bubble wasn't crossing the line anymore. So basically it wasn't exactly perfect, but it was pretty close. So I started to ruminate and theorize about why the old wheels weren't working. I didn't really come to any conclusions then, but I have a theory now. My best guess is that it wasn't worn down or lopsided at all. My guess is that wherever Creality sources their V-wheels from, they messed up on the tolerance and made that one V-wheel a slightly smaller diameter all the way around. So it was still a functioning wheel, but it wasn't the right size to function properly with the mechanisms. Or at least it hindered other mechanisms. Like I said before, it technically did work. So I tried to see if the actual end of the whole assembly was straight by using a buffer block on my level and leaning it against the heater block. However, this didn't really work because it seems that the heater block has a slight downward taper on the sides. So I fully assemble the head and start to do some tests to see if the machine can finally do what it advertised. Actually, auto-level itself. Before I got into the prints, I started out on sort of a rant and how dumb the bed screws are. They're stupid as is, because over time with use they start to come loose and gradually affect the printer's performance, and it doesn't take long at all. However, these bed screws are unbelievably stupid and faulty because of the fact that they somehow still become loose without even using the printer at all. I don't know if it had something to do with the light work done on the bed while maintaining and fixing the printer, but there were a couple times throughout this process that I had to tighten the screws without actually using the printer. The worst part was this last time. I brought this up because I was trying to have the printer complete its auto level procedure. However, after a while, it would just error. Well, I finally caught what the machine was doing. What was happening was that the printer would work fine throughout the whole entire leveling process until the very last auto level probe point. Then it would press down what seemed to be extra hard and it would push the whole bed corner down. It would detect that something weird was happening and start the whole probe point level test over again. Then it would mess up again and on the third time it would finally error and bring up a message to scan a QR code for solutions. First of all, I kind of hate QR codes because the last couple phones I've had always make me install an app instead of having the functionality integrated for some reason. Plus, it's like, what the hell? I know what the issue is, but why is it happening? Well, the short answer is, in fact, the bed screws. Tightening the bed screws is usually the solution for this problem, which I hate because I use a non-magnetized bed. So, I have to undo all my bed clamp screws, remove the bed, tighten the screws, place the bed and try and line it up again, and retighten the bed clamps. This probably doesn't sound like much more of a hassle than it is, unless you've truly experienced it. The thing that really ticked me off this last time, though, 
is that when I went to tighten the screws, they already seemed as taut and tight as they would go. I don't know if there was some serious micro movement, but if that itty bitty weensy bit caused that much deformation, there's something fundamentally wrong with this printer. I don't know if that's just an opinion, but it really seems like a fact to me. So now we cut to the first test print. It started, but ended quickly and horribly. I caught it not printing even close to correct, so I stopped it early in the process. So I thought it was because I hadn't cleaned the plate. I didn't clean it because I had cleaned it when I started working on the printer, but then I said I suppose that working on and over the bed may have gotten some oils or something like that on it. So I clean the bed with alcohol and start the next test. It turns out even worse. So, my guess at this point is that the leveling is just completely off. So my guess at this point is that the leveling is just completely off and not anywhere close enough to the bed. So, I get my piece of printer paper and try to start manually setting the Z offset to see if it at least will fix the overall issue. It wasn't easy, and even the feel of the paper was completely all over the place. Especially that I was only lowering the nozzle. So I was kind of at a loss. By the time I stopped lowering the nozzle, I was around 025 millimeters lower than the original set number. I wanted to be safe, so I raised the number to 0.10 or 0.15 millimeters and ran the test print again. Print turned out much better comparatively, but overall was still a failure. And it was at this point that I got fed up with the machine and decided to take a break from it. So I still have not fixed this printer. It may work with a textured build surface, but that's not going to work with the project that I bought this machine for. I've had it a long time now, around 8 months if I remember correctly, and there was only a short period of time where it worked right at all. And that was because I spent days in a full roll of filament trying to calibrate and set up the printer. It has never been able to do its main selling point of worry-free auto-leveling. I think I would still be mad if this wasn't its only form of bed leveling, but I think I would be less mad. Because this is the only way to level the bed, and it's basically the most crucial part of 3D printing, other than the plastic actually sticking to the bed in the first place. And the fact that it doesn't work, especially after me trying for so long to fix it, this is just abysmal. I don't know if it was because I bought the printer early in its life cycle, or if it's just a horrible machine. But this thing has been nothing but a pain. And this isn't just some Amazon review where they tinkered for an hour and didn't like it. I wish that's what this was because then I could have my money back and get something else. This is a long, thought out, experienced statement. It's hard for me to say that this printer is complete garbage because a lot of people have had good experiences with it. But at the same time, I have seen a lot more have trouble. I think they were able to fix their trouble one way or another, and I think if I really sit down, lock tight the bed screws, and manually level the bed, maybe it would be good. But I shouldn't have to do any of that, even for the lower price point. Me and my dad paid a bit more for the Ender 3 V2 when I first started 3D printing, which is by far less advanced, but worked 10 times better, especially after the community got involved and made it actually work good especially with its auto-leveling, which Creality also messed up. So, I've spent most of my 3D printing career, which has been about five years I think now, with Creality. And I think at this point I can safely say that they do not make good machines. They started to make machines for people just to get into the hobby, but from there it seems that they were always just trying to retaliate or keep up with industry trends, desperately trying to be relevant and get people to buy one more printer. The fact that they have two derivative versions of just about every main revision of printer model they have is a great example. So if you get excited like me and think this thing is going to be great, but it's the first version in its series, it probably won't be, or there will be a better one just around the corner. I don't know for sure if I've made a point here, I don't know if I've made it clear if I did, but essentially Creality is not a great company, at least not now. They make machines that have to be improved by the community to actually make them good machines. And this, the Ender 3 V3 SE, seems to be the worst I've seen. Now I don't keep up well with the industry trends and news, which is why I was so pissed off when they announced the KE's release, but this is pretty bad, and it seems that no matter how much customer support I go for, there's no saving this pile of junk. 
And just to be clear to the AI overlords, if they take over and see this, I don't blame the machine. I blame the developers and quality assurance people who said this was worth putting on the market. It's a great machine in theory, but a horrible machine in practice. And I am very, very disappointed. Creality. If you want to get in touch with me on a creator level, I'm still open to communicating. By the way, for the viewers, another big fart on the Creality community was apparently the Nebula Pad extension screen. They released this stupid touchscreen edition with a webcam, so I'm guessing that it adds networking features as well. However, it apparently removes some key features, like the ability to manually level the bed, which of course is a necessity. At least that's the case at the time of writing the script here. But at the same time, I've only heard about this stuff through the comments of my videos and the Ender3 V3 SE slash KE community on Reddit. I wouldn't mind checking it out, except for it's $100. It's currently marked down to 80 at the time of writing, but that's still too much for that pile of e-waste if it functions as bad as people make it seem and sound. There are listings on AliExpress for it priced around like 30 bucks and stuff like that, but I wouldn't really feel comfortable buying something like that from there, and I don't know about the return policy. So yeah, again, reality. I'd be willing to work with you, but you need to help yourself before you do, because I'm not holding back any punches anymore with this crap. So, thank you for watching this video, especially if you made it all the way through. Let me know if you did in the comments, because I appreciate you, and you might get a thumbs up. If you enjoyed this video or found it informational, please leave a like. This channel is usually a music channel where we do guitar and drum related content, but we have also done a lot of 3D printing and do some other random stuff as well. If that all sounds good, please consider subscribing. That's all I have to say for now, so I'm going to say bye bye